Welcome to War of the Andes, a conflict simulation system to portray various current military scenarios involving Chile, Peru, Bolivia, and Argentina. This is a two-player short scenario facing Chile and Peru, in which Chile can score objectives by advancing over Bolivian territory. At the end of the last video, we saw Chile gave priority to the advancement of ICIC's 2nd Armored Brigade into Bolivia. That delayed the logistic support to the northern front, with Peru. At the same time, Peruvian defenders rushed their 3rd Armored Brigade to the southern border, unwilling to give ground to the invaders. Score reflects Chile's gains in Bolivia, but those aren't yet enough to appeal for a ceasefire. Peru still manages to control all its initial objectives. Casualties have been high for both sides, but Chile hasn't managed to evacuate them from the front lines, as Peru did, thanks to their army transport helicopters. Bottom line. The northern front is at a stall, and the eastern front has advanced, but is overstretched. At the start of day two, Chile activates its sixth division to reform their lines. Troops fall back to resupply and defend Butte from the Peruvian 4th Mountain Division advancement. There is the danger that the Peruvian Armored Reconnaissance Unit could rush the flank and attack or isolate the Chilean units in Bolivia. 6th Division Motorized Infantry pushes on to Tacna defenders with two successful attacks over Peruvian Armor and Engineers units. The division's artillery units are cleared from the endangered flank, and the engineer units forfeit their initial role of facilitating military traffic and move forward to reinforce threatened positions. Division signals and logistics units continue advancing to position themselves where they are needed. But it would take at least a day more to get them all properly placed to work efficiently. Now, Peru activates its 3rd Armor Brigade. Seeing Tacno is about to fall, the commander chooses to strike the invaders with mechanized infantry and artillery support. It successfully reduces a Chilean motorized infantry company, causing casualties. Then, confidently, proceeds to deploy its anti tank guided missile crews to reinforce the threat to the enemy flank. Chile activates its 1st Air Brigade. Two F-16 squadrons depart from Los Condor's air base to establish a combat air patrol over Tacna. Then, four A-36 attack planes squadrons strike the Peruvian forces at La Llarada, threatening the flank of the army's advance. The bombers manage to inflict casualties and reduce a mechanized infantry company, but two planes are shot down in the process. At the same time, Reconnaissance Hermes drones are deployed around Butch. Peru now activates its Air Force units. Two reduced MiG-29 squadrons are merged together into a fully operational one. They are sent along to Mirage 2000 squadrons to intercept the attackers. MiGs attack and take down two F-16s. The Mirages dogfight with no effect. The Chilean aircraft can now return to base. And so do the Peruvian fighters. Then, Peru uses its Mi-25 attack helicopters to strike the enemy forces at Tacna and evacuate casualties. None of them manages to inflict damage to the Chilean Leopard tanks in the city. One squadron is hit and reduced by the NASAM's air defense system at Arica. The casualties are taken back to Arequipa and returned to the casualties track. A single Mi-171 helicopter squadron is then launched to resupply defenders at Tacna and evacuate casualties at La Llarada. Mission is successful, and casualties are taken back to Arequipa and placed in the casualties track.
Now, it's Chile's turn, choosing to activate its first armored brigade. Engineers in Tacna dug in defensive positions and set a casualties collection point. The reduced mechanized infantry company now retreats to its headquarters at Arica. The armored artillery company advances into Tacna, and so does the logistics unit, to help managing the mounting casualties. The reduced leopard tank unit, assaults the city defenders, with the support of the paladin howitzers. A Peruvian mechanized infantry unit, despite benefiting from a defensive artillery barrage, is reduced and takes casualties. Finally, the signals company advances into the Peruvian city, to help with the defense, and urban control. With the good number of units in Tacna, urban control should not be a problem for occupation forces. Peru, activates its 4th Mountain Brigade. Its spearhead divides, moving infantry southwest to Micala, and striking forces near Putre, with its AMX-13 light tanks. Despite having defensive artillery barrage, the Chilean unit is reduced and takes casualties. The rest of the brigade elements, slowly continue heading south, to assist in the defense of the southern frontier. Chile, now activates its army air brigade. It chooses to deploy, a second Puma transport helicopters platoon. Both Puma platoons, depart from Los Condor's air base to resupply forces in Tacna, and evacuate their casualties. Afterwards, they return the casualties to Ikake, and those are placed back in the casualties track. Mind, that I forgot to check, for anti-aircraft artillery in Tacna. Doing it now. With no effect. Sorry about that. Peru activates its army aviation. First, it launches three Mi-17 helicopter squadrons, to resupply the defenders in Tacna, and evacuate their casualties to Arequipa. The mission is successful, all aircraft return unharmed, and the casualty marker is returned to the casualties track. Then, a single Mi-17 squadron is launched, to resupply the armor unit harassing Putre. The unit returns without inconvenience. Finally, a Cheyenne turboprop aircraft, is set to its command and control configuration, then deployed around Tacna, to coordinate joint activation of units, in a bold move, meant to cut the enemy supply line. The aircraft activated the southern command mechanized unit, at La Yarada, to assault the chilling position in Los Palos, with support of the 3rd Cavalry Brigade Artillery Unit, from Tacna. Unfortunately for Peru, the reduced attacking unit, was ambushed and destroyed. Now, leaving the Peruvian flank, dangerously exposed to counter-attack. Chile, then activates his 2nd Air Brigade strategic assets. Choosing to bring reinforcements, using its B-767 airliner, that flies to Arica, with additional manpower, for the 1st Brigade Mechanized Infantry Company. Then, activates the C-130 Hercules, that delivers artillery shells and anti-aircraft missiles, to units in Arica. Both planes, end refit after returning to base. Peru, activates its Southern Command. Many units, slowly crawl to the front lines, along the coast, and through the narrow mountain corridors. One can only wonder, if they will get there, on time to make a difference. Chile, now activates its 2nd Armored Brigade. With the front line units stuck, occupying objectives in Bolivia, the support units tried to catch up and relieve them, so as to continue the offensive. Peru, activates what little remains, of its 3rd Cavalry Unit. Fearing a night attack from the Chilean heavy units, they distribute their ammunition stocks, and desperately place the logistics unit in Ite, to serve as a speed bump, in case the Chileans try to rush at night.
the now undefended army base at Lakumba. The night operations phase starts. Indeed, Chile activates its first armored brigade to clear the flanks of their supply line. A reduced tank company assaults the Peruvian guided missile teams before they can be set up, with devastating consequences. Then the mechanized infantry company trusts into Arica, and it's ambushed by the defenders, but manages to destroy what is left of the Peruvian mechanized infantry. Since the destroyed units amount to over the number of casualty markers in the casualties track, Peru loses one step in the objectives track. Right now, only three support units from the 3rd Cavalry Brigade is what remains afoot to defend the two objective, Tacna and La Cumba, Chile needs to force a ceasefire. Peru activates its 4th Mountain Brigade to finish off its assault on the Chilean artillery unit near Putre. The reduced company is destroyed and placed in the casualties track, bringing Chile dangerously close to lose an objective. Chile activates its second armored brigade. The only remaining frontline unit thrusts forward into the Bolivian city of Oyuro. The armored unit is spent and takes casualties, but manages to capture the objective, leaving Bolivia willing to agree to a ceasefire. Chile, on the other hand, needs only one more objective to get there. Peru activates its army air brigade. An upgraded Mi-171 helicopter squadron flies into Tacna, evading the missile air defense, delivering artillery shells, and evacuating casualties. Once those are flown to Arequipa, they are returned to the casualties track. Then, a second Mi-171 helicopter squadron flies southeast to Putre to resupply the AMX-13 light tanks reconnaissance unit and back to base. In the urban control phase, Chilean occupation forces check for civil disturbance in the city of Tacna. Their role is successful, and they sustain no casualties. In the supplies phase, all headquarter locations produce a supplies marker, and those, as well as casualties markers, can be moved by logistics units. From Iquique, supplies are taken to Huevina, and casualties are evacuated there from Huachacola. Supplies from Putre are transported to Arica and delivered to the artillery and air defense units there. Supplies from Arica are transported to Tacna and distributed among the frontline units. Supplies from Tacna are stored in the city. Supplies from Moquegua are transported to Taratu Army Base. One supply marker, in transit from the north, arrives at Lakumbu Army Base. Another supply marker, coming from the north, is also stored at the Army Base in Tarata. Supplies from Arequipa are transported and reach Moquegua. Supplies from Puno remain stored in the base. Foreign aid phase rules are not yet implemented for this scenario. So, this is how the map looks like at the end of the second day of conflict, third day of operations. Peruvian reserves desperately crawling to reach Tacna, that is about to fall in Chilean hands. The 4th Mountain Brigade was delayed and diverted in Putre, but may prove to be worth if they can compromise any of the Chilean objectives. It will take time for Chile to squeeze another objective in Bolivia. Will it be able to hold Peru for long? With only one objective left to win, any mistake at this point could make that ceasefire condition unobtainable. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, Please feel free to like comment share and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.